We are talking this morning about how to grow a writer through online literature discussion. Brave Writer facilitates so much writing growth and I want to make sure you have an accurate understanding of how all that works. Brave Writer has an extensive online writing presence on the internet. And one of the things that I'm discovering by sort of hovering in the online world, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, our Brave Schoolers group, is that people are attracted to what we're doing, but not everyone understands it. And so today, what I want to help you with is an appreciation for the philosophy, the pedagogy, the underlying values and strategies that we use to grow your children into great writers. So before we get into sort of the nuts and bolts of a specific class, I want you to understand why we run our online classes the way we do and what we hope to achieve in those spaces. Brave Writer was designed by me, a homeschooling mother and a professional freelance writer. Back when my children were young and the internet was new, I was looking for ways to help parents grow their children as writers. I was working with my own children at home, but how could we do that online? How could we do it in such a way that children grew and parents were reassured that their children were making that progress? Well, first of all, I knew as a homeschooling parent, the last thing I needed was to be told, show up for a live class every Tuesday at 10 a.m. with a headset and special software. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of pressure. In fact, it's one of the main reasons I didn't put my kids in school. I didn't want a bus schedule. I didn't want to fill out field trip forms. I didn't want to be beholden to somebody else's schedule. And yet so often online classes recreate school. You sign up for a whole semester. You have to be online at a specific time, two or three times a week. And if you're late, you feel late. The class is going and you're sort of sneaking in, you know, showing up, trying to figure out where everybody is. In a lot of these online class settings, there is a teacher speaking, there's a PowerPoint, and then there's a sidebar chat discussion between all the students. And so what you've got is you've got people showing up live from all different kinds of time zones, listening to a speaker or watching a PowerPoint, all while having a simultaneous conversation in the chat. For me personally, as a mother of multiples with lots of things going on already in my life, I knew that I would never be able to sustain that kind of interaction and really give full focused attention while all this background stuff was going on. Do you know what I mean? Like even if I had the headset on or my child had the headset on, that doesn't mean the rest of the family is cooperating with that experience. Maybe the baby spits up. Maybe the child I set up with this beautiful set of blocks builds a tower and it falls prematurely and now there is just a flood of tears. It's difficult, isn't it? To manage your homeschool and your home life around a schedule that someone else creates. So when we built Brave Writer, our goal was to create an asynchronous experience one that you could access whether you lived in Tokyo, Japan, or you lived in Madrid, Spain, or you were in Omaha, Nebraska. Wherever you lived, you would be able to log in at a time that was truly convenient to you and your child. So maybe for some of you that always happens in the evening after dinner and your spouse is home. For others, it might be tuning in every afternoon right after the baby is nursed to nap. The point is, I never wanted anyone to feel like they were watching replay and getting a substandard version of the education that we were offering online. I wanted you to feel like when you showed up ready to give full attention, the class was ready for you. It was waiting for you. It was in its best and fullest form. So when we first started Brave Writer and we started doing online classes, actually our first format was email. We didn't even have a discussion board. So literally the emails would flow into your inbox and then when it was convenient for you, you would read each one. Well, we discovered quickly that the internet was growing new ways to communicate. This was in the early 2000s and we moved on to a discussion board style platform. 
Since then, we have custom designed a platform that follows the kind of writing experience we want you to have, and it is absolutely beautiful to behold. It's not Blackboard, it's not Canvas, these ones that are all a little bit, uh, you know, used in the high college or high school model. No, 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 this is designed for us, for homeschooling families, for your needs. So the first thing you need to know is you can log in at any time. The second thing you need to know is all of our classes are short. So our classes last anywhere from three to six weeks. And in our book clubs, which is what we're going to talk about today, they are each a self-contained unit for a month. You don't have to sign up for five book clubs. You can sign up for a single month. And then you can take a month off and then you can come back and sign up for another one. There's no obligation. It's not like you sign up and you're like, well, I don't wanna do those two books, but I wanna do the fourth one, so I have to sign up because there won't be another chance for six months. No, you get to join and leave at any time. The goal of these one month increments is this, a deep dive. We want you to be able to give your full attention to one book or your full attention to one style of writing or your full attention to one essay format. Why is that important? Because brain research is showing us that this narrow focused attention for a short period of time, for a short commitment, creates more connection and more learning than if we do seven things a little bit each day, which isn't that the school model? <laughs> so we don't wanna do that. I don't wanna make you commit for a semester when I know you've got math, social studies, geography, Latin, and science studies. No, you could commit for three weeks or four weeks of writing and really focus on it. Maybe even put off history or geography during that month and really have a satisfying in-depth experience with writing and literature and then take a break or do something else. The reason this is valuable is when you give dedicated attention, dedicated attention, during time that you feel healthy and good and alert and awake, you learn more. So our book clubs and our online classes last three to six weeks. And yes, they are focused on one aspect of writing for a reason, to help you, not to hinder you, but to give you that sense that you've really had a profound deep dive experience. And then you can take a break before and after. I also know that if I ask you to commit for an entire semester, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna give birth because <laughs> you're already seven months pregnant or you're gonna have to go on a select soccer tournament to Tennessee because your child's team made the national tournament or your mother-in-law is gonna break a hip and you are the only daughter-in-law who's willing to help her out. Life happens. Homeschool allows us to be flexible. By asking you only to commit to three to six weeks, you leave more space in your life for those intrusions that are welcome, that you want to be able to give your full heart to and not worry, well, I paid for a semester and now I can't complete it. So that's how Brave Writer is structured. So one of the things that we discovered early on is that if we had literature selected, we could teach the mechanics of writing and literary elements and the craft of writing to kids. So what we did is we created these guides that were called the arrow, the wand, the quiver, the pouch of boomerangs, the boomerang. In fact, early on, we even had a product called the slingshot. And people have always asked me, you know, why all these violent tools? Well, I, I tried really hard not to use like a bullet or something like that. Initially, these tools came through email. They like were shot from my house to yours. So the tagline for the arrow was, the arrow, shooting language arts directly into your inbox. That was the title. Now, we offer them in a different way now. They don't come as an email. They come as a PDF, beautifully designed digital downloads. But we stuck with our metaphor of the arrow, the boomerang, partly because we knew that it was more invitational to children. If you say to your child, here is your language arts program for third grade, or here is your grammar and spelling program for third grade. Isn't it a little weirdly schooly and off-putting? But if you say, we're doing the arrow, suddenly now you've kind of created an image in your child's mind of intentionality, of 
sort of risk adventure, you know, even something more outdoors, the boomerang, you know, language arts going out and coming back to you. Uh, that was the original idea, a magic wand. So when we are promoting these tools, we discovered that we could also create literature discussion questions. You know, not all parents are comfortable with that. And so for our high school level, we created what we call think piece questions. Now, the word think piece is, the word pair, is somewhat new to most of you, I'm sure. It was created by my guru, my writing guru, Peter Elbow. Dr. Peter Elbow suggests the practice of free writing. He is the king. That's where we get the idea from. It wasn't my idea, it was his idea. Free writing is expressing your original thought life on paper without any restrictions. Spelling, punctuation, mechanical errors, uh, no organization, doesn't have to be an essay. It's getting in touch with what I have to say and getting it out in written form. The next level from free writing is something that Dr. Peter Elbow calls think pieces. It's where we guide the free writing with a provocative question. So in our boomerang level, we created these nine questions, three per week, if you did them for three weeks. And the goal of these questions is to guide conversation and free writing. In other words, instead of just saying, write about the book, which you certainly could do, and there'd be plenty of value you'd get from that. But instead of saying that, we're going to ask now a targeted question, something that invites the student to think at a little more intentional, a little more deep level, a deeper level. So we might ask a question like, you know, who is this main character? What are some of this character's natural personality qualities? Do you identify with any of those? And now your child is going to write about this character and make a few personal connections, but it's still a free write. It's just guided by these questions, it's a think piece. It's a piece of writing revealing thoughts. So we started doing that at the boomerang level and boy, did we get great feedback. We started hearing from parents who said, we would love it if our children could discuss these books using those questions together in an online class. And I thought, well, that's a brilliant idea. So we started offering these high school level writing discussion classes around literature, what we eventually called a book club. And the Boomerang Book Club was taught by an instructor who is trained by us. These are not just discussions of a bunch of families on a discussion board and we never check in. No, they're actually led by our trained writing professional staff. These are professional writers who were also either homeschooled or homeschooled their own children who are now guiding you in literary discussion. But here's what's magic. Here's what's totally unique about what we do in Brave Writer. This discussion is not about the mechanics. We're not interested in telling a 13-year-old write an essay analyzing the literary theme of passion in Romeo and Juliet. That's not what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. We're inviting your kids to tap into their thoughts and then to type them in conversation with other students and with the instructor. Your kids don't even know they're writing. You know why? They're thinking. They're reading the question and they're thinking, oh, here's what I wanna say. And then they take these magical fingers and they type their thoughts. They don't think they're writing because they're literally typing what they're thinking. Writing for kids feels like, here's the big assignment, here's all the criteria, here's what you have to produce but that's not what's going on in these discussion clubs. They are every bit as powerful as Reddit or fan fiction sites like Wattpad, where kids are so eager, you know, a discussion board for their online group, they, their online game. They are eager to self-express, to try and get their thoughts out there to be read, to be compared to someone else's. And then here's the magical thing that happens. Our instructor reads them and she'll come back and say, ooh, I like where you're going with this. I see what you mean about X. Have you considered it from this perspective? What about this? Oh, what you just described, that's actually an example of foreshadowing. Do you know what foreshadowing is? And they start weaving into this conversation 
a literary analysis vocabulary. It comes out as naturally as sitting around a table and talking about a Disney movie, but they're doing it in typing. There's no conversation on the side. There's no talking out loud. The only talking they're allowed to do is what comes out of the brain is funneled down an arm and emerges from the fingertips. Do you know what this is doing? These think pieces, these little free writes that are guided by these questions forms the foundation for thinking analytically about literature. It allows your kids to begin to use the vocabulary of literary analysis before they're required to put it in a thesis-based essay. They're getting facility with language. Every child in the class sees everybody else's writing. It's a discussion group, but there's no fear here, and here's why. The instructor never critiques anybody. It's all about growing. It's not about grading. We're not telling you what you didn't do yet. We're inviting you to do more. We're helping you investigate possibilities that emerge from your initial thoughts. We're helping kids dig a little deeper, find out more about what they know. We're not saying, well, you know, that was foreshadowing and you didn't name it. You get an X or you get a C or that's not a very good description of foreshadowing. It's the opposite of that. We say, wow, I see this little smidgen of an idea. For instance, a student might say something like, I think the setting really helps this story. I really liked it. It felt like I was there. That doesn't sound like literary analysis, but guess what? This student has just identified that the setting had an impact on him. The instructor might come back and say, ooh, the setting. Tell me more about that. What was it about the setting? Was it the time of day, the weather, the way the author described the natural outdoors, the mood between the characters? Tell me a little more about that. And now the child might come back and say, well, it was because it was about to rain and I could tell that makes me feel sad. And then the scene was sad. And now this instructor or a collaborative child will say something like, I see. You're identifying setting and mood and how they shape the way a reader experiences that story. This is what goes on. And we look at themes, we look at plot devices, we look at protagonists. We use that vocabulary, but it's in conversation. It isn't about writing an essay. It's about learning to become comfortable with literary analysis. So here's what happens. One of the classes that we started years ago, first was with the boomerang, then we added the arrow level for elementary, and this year we've added a junior high level. So now we have three levels, arrow book club, pouch book club for junior high, and boomerang book club for high school. My daughter Johanna has been teaching the high school one now for multiple years. I think she's on her fourth year. And one of the things she has pointed out to me many times is this. In August and September, when kids are brand new and they're just learning, their thoughts are like two or three sentences, and she's sort of gently pulling out hand over hand more vocabulary. Those kids who stay in for a semester or even a year, by the end are writing paragraphs, and they're marshalling this vocabulary, and they are so thrilled by their competence to discuss literature in a meaningful way with the kind of vocabulary you would expect in an essay and they are proud of it. They know they know how to do it now. And you know what happens? They sign up for a literary analysis class or take an English 101 class at the local junior college or the co-op, and suddenly they're asked to write an essay about literature, and they know exactly what goes in it. They're not sitting there hamstrung going, okay, I've got to think of a thesis, I've got to figure out my three points, I've got to figure out what a theme is, I don't know what a motif is. No, they already have the raw material. They know how to think their way through literature and assign it these values and analyze it. And then when they hit the point where they have to write essays, at least the content is already something they know how to do. And the only thing they need to add is the structure. So let me now let you in on the key pedagogical philosophy of Brave Writer because I have just unearthed it and demonstrated it to you. We start with total freedom. Write whatever you want, write about what you know, get it out there, make mistakes, don't worry about structure or organization. That's level one. 
And we encourage lots of it, free ride for a year if you want to. Get comfortable self-expressing out of a brain, down through an arm, out a keyboard, or with a pen. That's freedom in writing. The second level is think piece, big juicy question writing, where you gently guide the writer toward a target, a topic, a historical subject, a novel, an experience at Taekwondo. You gently look at a topic and you allow your free writing to now be aimed at a target. So you start writing with the target in mind. You don't worry about spelling or punctuation or structure or organization. Now you're just honing your eyesight, your literary and writing eyesight at a target. You're like getting it in your sights while you're writing. And you allow all of that sort of stirred up imagination and information to flow out of you, still not organized, still not perfectly spelled or punctuated, but now there's like a germ of an idea and you're, you're willing to chase it a little bit. You're willing to look around the corners and see what else there is to say. So that's level two. Level three is bringing in forms, structures, containers for all that insight. Here's how most writing programs do it. They start with the structure. All right, we're gonna do literary analysis essays. Here's what the format looks like. Now, on your own, go away from me, get some insights and put it in this perfect structure and then I'm gonna analyze whether you were insightful enough and did it in the right format. Isn't that how most schools function? Now we do it the other way around. We start out with total freedom, then we narrow the focus and expand the writing on a certain topic. And then once we know how to generate insight and how to think in writing, now we introduce containers to put it in. And for a child who's nine years old, maybe that's a lap book. And for a child who's 15 years old, maybe that is a literary analysis essay. See where I'm going? So our book clubs for high school, junior high and elementary school are designed to grow writers. They're not parties. I mean, we've got party ideas in those tools, the arrow, the boomerang. We have party ideas for you in our current ones for you to throw at home and have a great time. But our book clubs online are growing writers. We're helping your kids become insightful, analytical writers. Somebody is asking about dysgraphia, dyslexia. Absolutely, speech-to-text software is a great way to start. They could also talk to you and you could be their transcriptionist. They could record themselves and type what they heard themselves say. Absolutely provide the baseline support your child needs to get in touch with having something to say. Why should a dyslexic child be barred from having insightful writing about literature simply because they lag behind on mechanics? You know, people with all kinds of learning impediments write books and dissertations and teach in colleges and they find ways around it. But the goal is to stir up the inner life, the vocabulary, the insight generator, the ability to self-express in writing. And our book clubs do a phenomenal job of that. So in August, we have three clubs that got started already, but the discussions don't really get going till next week. For the high school level, we are starting today. So if you want your kids to jump into the Boomerang Book Club for this month, sign up today. We are discussing four short stories, and I am going to go find those right now. I should have already done this, um, but I wanna make sure that we uh, get you the right information. So hold on one quick second <laughs> while I load the page. These stories, are all short stories that get taught in high school literature programs. So if you are looking to build the transcript of what you need for your high school students' English credits, reading short stories is part of that. And we have picked four with surprise twisted endings. And if you remember high school and went to a traditional school, you might remember these. The first sto short story is my favorite short story of all time. It is the most memorable one I've ever read. It's called, an Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. It's written by Ambrose Bierce. 
And our little subtitle for it is A War Crime, A Rope, A Bridge, and A Twist. Fabulous short story. Second one is called The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry. A loving couple exchanges gifts. What could go wrong? The third short story is The Diamond Necklace by Guy de Maupassant. And it is A Diamond Necklace is Borrowed and Returned. All is well, or is it? And then finally, the ultimate classic that probably everyone remembers reading is The Lady or the Tiger by Frank R. Stockton. There's a choice to be made. What will the princess do? These short stories are fabulous reads. So even if your child is just joining today, needs to read this story, you've got time because it's asynchronous. That means your child could be reading the story now and jump into the conversation and the discussion questions once they've finished reading and they won't feel behind. There will be insights to read that may trigger their own. The instructor is already engaged in conversation. So if you sign up for the Boomerang Book Club today, they will do one short story per week. I had a question yesterday from someone saying, what if we're gonna be gone for a week? Will my child be behind? We just recommend in August, especially with short stories, if you skip a week, let's say you're on vacation week three, well then just read that short story and read the discussion when you get home and maybe just have a big juicy conversation with your family. You could certainly contribute your own thoughts at that point, the instructor will certainly notice and comment on them. So the Boomerang Book Club is for eighth to 11th grades and we're doing four short stories. The other two book clubs, The Pouch and The Arrow, are for younger kids. The Pouch Book Club, the discussion starts next Monday. They are using this week to get to know each other. It is taught by none other than Caitlin Curley. Some of you know her from the Homeschool Sisters podcast or Game Schooling, which is her big contribution to our homeschool community. Caitlin just came on staff with Brave Writer, and she will be guiding your children in the discussion of a Wrinkle in Time. Now that book is an absolute classic. I highly recommend starting the year with that book. Your, teen, your junior high kids are sure to fall in re love with reading just by reading that book. And of course, there's also the Disney movie that's out, which is fabulous for compare and contrast. Not everyone loved the movie, but here is a little tip and trick for you. Teens and junior high kids, love to feel superior by critiquing something that sucks, <laughs> something that doesn't work. So if they saw the Disney movie and they're like, that's not what how it was supposed to be, that doesn't match the book, let them fully embrace that moment because that is what triggers a lot of writing, the reaction to something that you disapprove of. So um, I, yeah, excuse my language, I didn't mean to go there, but anyway, the point is, Allow that. Don't worry about always showing your kids the perfect version of things. They love to be the expert who finds all the flaws. I loved listening to my kids take the Lord of the Rings movies apart. They loved the movies, but they also had things they loved about the books, and they felt very grown up when they could level a legitimate critique. So A Wrinkle in Time is what we're doing in August for the junior high level, and there will be all kinds of robust discussion about that book, and it's happening now. And then the next one I want to point out to you is the Arrow Book Club, and that is for late elementary school, you know, third to fifth, sixth grade, something like that. And we are discussing The Penderwicks at Last. That book is the final in a series, and it is designed for your students to be able to discuss this book. You do not have to have done all the Penderwicks in order to enjoy this one. That is a mistake some people have made. But I wanted you to understand that, um, that the book itself is rich. You don't have to have been a Penderwicks fan. What will happen for many kids is they will want to read the entire series and we highly encourage that. Johanna, my daughter, is also teaching the Arrow Book Club this month. So she is the one who is in there. And I bring her up to you for a reason. Johanna has been involved with students now for about four years, three or four years. And what I've noticed is she winds up being a kind of role model. This was unwitting. It wasn't my idea when we hired her. I hired her because she was good with kids. She worked as a social worker and she was wonderful with literature. That's been like her secret passion. 
And so she brings this very capable interacting skill with young kids combined with her passion for literature. But here's what happened. She's in her late 20s and a lot of these kids look at her knowing she was a homeschooler like they were. And they see this picture of someone just a little older who's also really capable and they can picture who they might become. Isn't that interesting? And uh, she's gotten to know some of these kids over the years. She's written uh, college recommendations for them. So our staff is like that. We also have Dawn Smith, who teaches some book clubs, Mary Wilson, who is our favorite party school creator of all time. So our trained staff, and they go through a rigorous training. We all know that they tell us at the end of training they feel like a dish rag because we train them with so much care and nuance so that they are affirming and deeply invested in these classes and know how to move the writing forward. All our teachers are equipped to do that for your kids. So when people ask me, well, why is it $99? Well, here's why. First, we include the $12 guide in that price. So if you're going to take August, the Penderwicks at last, you're going to get the Arrow Penderwicks Guide, which is like over 30 pages long. It includes party school, copywork dictation, literary uh, discussion, literary elements. All of that is in the guide, and that's part of your $99. Secondly, you have a dedicated, trained, professional writer working with your kids. This is not just about facilitating a place for them to have a free-for-all discussion while we're off just making sure they don't use bad words. There is an engagement level that is daily in Brave Writer online classes. We don't have office hours. You literally have access to them anytime you can type a question. It can be the weekend, it can be a weekday. Our instructors are trained to check the boards every day looking for questions, making sure they're giving feedback. And each of our book clubs, your students will get a comment a week at least. And there is going to be interaction between kids we organize them sometimes into smaller groups so that they have a little cohort so it's not overwhelming to deal with, you know, 30 or 40 kids, depending on the size of the class. So I wanted to point all this out because right now in the homeschool world, and I sort of want to kind of take credit for it, but there are a lot of book clubs out there now. Everybody is seeing the value of devoting energy to a narrow focus, a book for a month or a book for six weeks. And there are lots of ways to explore these books. And so this idea that we would gather and discuss and share about what we love about a book, I mean, it's much older than me. I'm, I never came up with the idea to have book clubs, but to bring it to you through a virtual methodology, uh, we're all interested in that now. That is a homeschooling love. So many parents are doing it. We are seeing Brave Writer in-person book clubs pop up all over the country and beyond. So I'm totally for that. What separates our book clubs from other book clubs is that we see it as a vehicle for that middle step in writing, where we go from total freedom to formats. This is the in-between stage. When parents call me and they say, I don't know what to do with my high schooler. He really doesn't like writing. I don't know where to start. Invariably, I say, start with a book or movie discussion club. They don't know they're writing when they're in those book clubs and movie clubs. They feel like they're simply expressing opinions, but because they're doing it in typing, they are actually writing. And that's the difference. That's what we offer. That's what we do. That's what we're good at. And so I hope that this clarifies some of the confusion around what our book di discussion clubs do. You will receive the arrow or the boomerang as part of your club, and then you will receive four weeks of interaction with an instructor and fellow students, three of those weeks specifically focused on discussion of the book. Any questions before I sign off? August has begun. We have space in all those classes. The reason that we are promoting them today is that we forgot to promote them before the July registration date opened. And now because it says August 1st on those pages, it looks as though the classes are already started. But the truth is we just scheduled them first to the 31st or 30th every time. 
and use the first week or week and a half for introductions and then we dive into discussion. So you're not too late. And even the high school one, which is starting short story discussion today, you could easily jump in and get started. Short stories are not long to read and you will not feel behind in any way. Let's see, when will January May book clubs open for registration? We open January and spring semester in December. So get ready for that registration period in December. Oh, and I forgot to say, if you sign up for three or five, you get discounts. I think if you sign up for three, you get $7 off. If you sign up for five, you get $20 off. Uh, let's see. Oh, I want to see if I can see these. Could one one's child take a book discussion class at the same time as other Brave Writer classes? Excellent question. We recommend not doing that. Our writing classes are definitely deep dives. And we think occasionally like an overlap of a week, let's say it was the end of one writing class and it was the start of a book club where you're just introducing yourself, that would be fine. But I would not recommend having a book club and a writing class simultaneously overlapped because you will discover that your child really wants to give full dedication to one or the other and both will dilute the products that they put out, the writing they do. After this four weeks, will you be starting another set of classes? So the way it works is we have 10 book clubs at each level and each one is its own month and you can read the book list, what book is for each one, by going to class.bravewriter.com slash register. Click on the book club and all the different dates and book titles will come up and then you can decide which ones are right for your kids. But there's one every month of the year. The packet they receive to go with the story is something they do by themselves. Jamie, we recommend that parents do it with their kids who are in the arrow and pouch level. A lot of high schoolers do it themselves. You do not have to finish reading the book before you join the discussion because our discussion questions are in chronological order. So you'll want to be read up through what those discussion questions address and of course by the fourth week. So here's what happens. The first week, start reading the book, introduce yourself with everybody in the class. And then the second week we start discussing the beginning of the book that your child already started reading in the first week. Make sense? What if we are in the 2017-18 eras? Could we skip ahead to 2018-19 and not miss the information taught in earlier eras? So if you've got the 2017-2018 eras, you can do those anytime. If there is a particular book in the 2018-2019 that you think would be fun to do as a discussion club, simply do that month and leave the other eras you have aside to come back to after that month. If we signed up for the Year of Arrow, then the book club is separate. It is separate. And we recommended when we were advertising the Arrow, Pouch, and Boomerang that if you were going to do more than one book as a book club online, you probably would want to only buy those issues individually. If you need more help with that, let's say now you're just totally sold on these book clubs, you already bought the year long, and now you're going to do five or eight of them, we can work that out with you with some kind of a refunding situation. Contact help at bravewriter.com and we will make sure that you're not double purchasing because who wants to do that? That's too much money and these are important investments. Uh, what else? Good. Uh, any other questions? Uh, just signed my oldest up for the Mary Poppins Club. We'll read it together as a family and do the arrow as a family, but this will be her special extra. Beautiful. We have a lot of families do that. I also know families who sign up, they alternate kids, like one does one month and one does the next. And so one child is the main person in that book club, but they all as a family read all the discussion and talk about it as a family, evaluating other people's writing and their answers. And then the next child does the next month. And so they alternate that way instead of feeling like you have to have both in the book club the whole time. Another method for using our book clubs, if your child is not yet ready to write, but wants to grow in their ability to analyze literature, you can sign up your child and they never have to participate. And you can do what many parents in the past have done. Take your laptop to Barnes and Noble on a Sunday afternoon, open it up to the book club page discussion and discuss the discussion with your child. 
That is an entirely valid way to do these book clubs. And might I just add, if you do that at the beginning over time with a reluctant writer, there will be a moment when that child wants to get in there and contribute to the conversation. So use the book club in a way that honors your child and grows the writing program you have in your family. This is not about performance, grades, doing it the way we suggest. Use our book club discussions, especially if as an adult, you were a STEM kind of adult and you don't really remember literary analysis. Maybe do a book club for a month just to refresh your memory about how to talk about books with your kids. That's another valid use of the book clubs. Let's see. Does the discount for multiples work if we buy three for one and two for another? Yes, it does. And you can actually do it where it's not all arrows or boomerangs. So you could do two arrows, one pouch, and two boomerangs, three different kids, and you'll get the discount. That's exactly right. Good questions. So I hope this clarifies for you a little bit about not only our pedagogical goals when we do these book discussions, but also why we charge what we charge and the purpose of them in the scheme of Brave Writers program. We're big fans. I'm amazed at the growth I've seen in students. We get these amazing comments. One of the um, ones I wanted to read for, to you says, I can't believe it's over. I love this class. I really like the questions. They made me think about so many things. And I absolutely loved reading the comments by other students. Thank you, thank you. So there's a good example of what students feel. You know, it's so easy to get isolated at home and to feel like, gosh, you know, I'm never going to get a chance to share my thoughts. We have two poetry workshops that are classes that are for the whole family. Literally, you can go to our online classes and look those up. You pay one tuition and everyone in the family gets to be in the class. Now, this is a writing poetry class, not a reading poetry class, but the teacher includes poems to read to help you do the writing so it all gets mixed together and it is phenomenal. Uh, here is another comment that came um, from a parent. Thanks so much for another great Boomerang Book Club session. It was great reading along through this book with all of you. Uh, thank you so much for all that you offer our students. And I just want you to know that parents follow along. It's been an incredible opportunity for parents to sort of eavesdrop on the writing their children are doing. Sometimes just writing for you doesn't feel real, but knowing that there are other kids also taking the risk invites them to get up first thing, go on the computer, spend a little time reading and writing, and then you can log in later in the day and sort of look over their shoulder and just see how things are going. Maybe your child is not writing as substantial uh, a response as another student. Well, we don't have to be ashamed of that. That's just good information. So now maybe you'll have more things to talk about on that drive to the dentist. You might just sort of weave into some thoughts you had about the book that help grow your child's writer's imagination. Wanted to see if I could find another comment for you. Uh, here's a great example of a student. This is all really cool, especially that part about the glasses. I kept rereading it thinking, dang, I wish I'd thought of that insight. And then another student wrote under that, those are my thoughts exactly towards pretty much every reply I see in this class. <laughs> These are students, not just writing, they're commenting on how much they wish they were having the thoughts that other students are having in this class. Do you see the value? Do you see how this gets our children out of the isolation tank and into the wider world of discourse around literature? So that's why we're such fans of the Arrow and Boomerang book clubs and have added the pouch level. I will tell you, last year, every month except August sold out and the only reason August doesn't sell out is we're still trying to figure out when to notify you and let you register for it. But literally, we sold out all the seats. We had waiting lists, parents and kids alike. Love these discussion groups. So I invite you to join us while the getting's good, while August has lots of space in it. And if you have any more questions, please contact us at help at bravewriter.com. My trained and valuable staff is there ready to help you <laughs> answer any questions. Thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you online. Uh, ciao, everybody.